Ok, so this is my example scene. I can open this dialog box, close it and even enable options menu. But there is something wrong here. There are no animations. After this episode, you should be able to liven up this interface with nice transitions using just a few lines of code. If you'd like to create animations without coding, check out my other video where I teach you how to use Unity animations tools. Let's go! So in this video we'll be using Lerping. Basically, we have some kind of object with start parameters and we declare the end position, size or transparency of it. Based on that, our script will calculate the differences and animate them in the set time. We can write scripts like that by ourselves, but it's much better idea to use one of the free libraries in the Unity Asset Store. In this episode, we'll be using a Lean Tween, a great and free tool created just for our needs. If you have Unity 2019 or older, open Asset Store in the Unity itself. You can find it in the Window menu and then Asset Store. Search for Lean Tween and then click Add to my assets and import to your project. If you're using 2012 or newer, everything has been moved to the Package Manager. Go to Window, Package Manager and then from this drop-down select My Assets and search for Lean Tween. Same here, just click Download and then Import to your project. Ok, so now let's look at the prepared scene. Here I have a few action buttons and other components like character, settings box and even dialog box that will open on the full screen. Currently clicking any of those buttons doesn't do anything, so let's fix that. I'll start by working on this character. The idea is that after clicking this button, our character will start jumping. Jumping is of course just changing the Y position of this character image. So let's try to create an animation that will do that. Click on the character game object, then add a component and create a script called character jump. Open it. First, we need to create a new method that will be triggered on button click. Instead of start and update methods, type void start jumping. Open brackets. Inside of it, let's use our lean twin asset for the first time. We'll start by typing transform, which of course corresponds to the transform of this object, dot lean move local and passing a new position as the vector two and the time of the animation. So, because our character has a pivot point in the middle center, the x0 and y0 point is the center of the screen. Luckily, I've only changed the x value by moving it to the right, so the current position is x270 and y0. To move it up in the animation, all we need to do is to specify a new position with the higher y. So here in the arguments, type new vector2 and pass in a new x value, so the same 217, and new y value, so let's say 40. Then specify animation duration, let's say 1 second. Ok, that should be it for now, let's save it, go back to Unity and hook up our button. Click on the Start Jumping button object and here in the On Click event drag in from the hierarchy our character and select Character Jump, Start Jumping. Great! Now let's try it out. Press play and click on the button. It works, but it doesn't look good, not to mention that our character is currently levitating. The first thing we'll fix is the animation curve. So currently animation has the constant speed throughout the entire animation, but there are a few handy ease curves that can help us. Check out this cool web demo I have linked in the description. This blue box by default moves with the linear movement, the same as our character. But if we would change that to ease out, 
You can see that animation slows down at the end, which is way more pleasant to watch. I'll select that ease out quart that for me resembles the jumping gravity. Ok, now after we selected our curve, let's add it to the script. Simply at the end of this line, add dot set ease and type the one we've selected. So out quart. Great! Now when we go back to Unity and test our game, you can see that the character jumps and slows down a bit at the end. The last step will be to loop the animation, so in the script simply add set loop ping pong. Now our character will constantly reverse and repeat the animation, which gives the effect of jumping. Ok, let's move to the next one. So here I have a very basic settings object. By default it's constantly visible, but we don't want that. It should nicely appear when clicking the show settings button and of course close after pressing the close button. As you can see, here I've already created a script called settings window with two methods that are already connected to the corresponding buttons. This time I'd like to have a size in animation which basically will transform from 0 to 1 scale in all axes. In the open method, let's type transform dot lean scale and pass in vector2.1, which has x and y values set to the 1, and of course length of the animation, this time let's make it 0.8 second. Of course, if we'll try to play that animation, nothing will happen because by default this object already has size of 1. But we can easily fix that by changing that to 0 in the start method. Simply type transform that local scale equals vector2.0. Oh, and finally in the close method, let's type transform that lean scale and pass in vector2.0 as the final scale and 1 as the time. I will also add set is in back to show you different kinds of curves. Ok, that's it, it's finally time to test it out in Unity. You can clearly see both animation on opening the setting screen and the closing animation. Of course, you can repeat that multiple times. Ok, last but not least, the dialog box animation. So here I have this full screen object which has black background to dim the screen and the dialog box itself with a simple button to close it. My idea is to have a background slowly fading in and this middle box flying in from the bottom. As before, I've already created a dialog box script which contains the methods on enable and close dialog. The reason why we don't have an open dialog method is that I want this animation to start immediately after making this game object visible. Let's start by defining two objects that will be animated. The first one will be a box itself. So type public transform box. The second one will be a black background. But the problem is that using the basic transform component you're not able to change the transparency. To do that we need to go back to Unity and for the black background object we need to add a new component called Canvas Group. It allows us to change the transparency of this image using that one value. Ok, so back to our script, type public canvas group background. Ok, time for the on enable animation. For the background we can simply type background that lean alpha and pass in the final value, so that would be 1, and the time, 0.5. Remember that we need to reset it to the 0 first, so above that type background that alpha equals 0. Ok, now let's work on the box animation. We want to basically move it from the bottom of the screen to the middle, so type box that lean move local y 
because we're only moving that in the y axis and passing the final y point. So that would be 0. And time also 0.5 seconds. I'll also add set is out expo to smooth out the animation. And the new thing, I'll also delay the animation by typing at the very end of this line that delay equals 0.1. As before, we need to reset its position before animating. So before that, type box.localPosition equals new vector2 with 0x and minus screen.height, which means it will start at the bottom below the visible area. Remember that you can get source files for all Unity UI tutorials by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description. Ok, let's also quickly fill up the close dialog method. So type background that lean alpha and pass in 0 as an end value and 0.5 as a time. And then box that lean move local y and pass in minus screen that height as the end value and 0.5 as the time. I will also add that set is in expo. Ok, that should be all. Save the script, go back to Unity and let's hook up all the elements. First, connect the background object to the background field and the dialog box to the box field. Next, methods. Close button is already connected to the close dialog method, but here in the menu, the open box button should be connected to the dialog box and instead of running any method, we'll simply select game object, set active and set it to true. Time to test everything out. I will press play and try to click open dialog box. Whoa! It, it looks great. Now let's close it. It also works, but you can see I can't click anything now. That's because the dialog group is still enabled and even though our background is completely transparent, it still obstructs the view. Our solution in the script will be to hide the whole dialog grouped object. Fortunately, Lean Twin allows you to set what should happen after the animation is completed. Let's start by creating a simple method that will be triggered. Type void on complete, open brackets, and here we only need to type game object dot set active and pass in false. Then at the end of this line that animated our box, let's add dot set on complete and pass in the name of our method, so on complete. Okay. That is the end of coding for today. Let's test everything out for the last time. I click start jumping, which triggers our character jump animation. Then let's show settings and close them. And finally, let's open a dialog box with this great animation and close it. As you can see, after close animation, everything works just fine and we can even open the dialog box again. So that's it. Be sure to check out other video about UI animations. As always, thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. Be sure to check out my other videos about Playfab and Unity UI. See you soon.